In the sixth round of the 2021 NFL Draft with pick number 191 overall, the Philadelphia Eagles selecting from Coastal Carolina defensive end Teron Jackson. Hello, everyone. I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro, joined now by Teron a few days after the draft. I assume you've been breathing a little bit since Saturday afternoon. Teron, what have these last few days been like? And congratulations and welcome to Philadelphia. Thank you. Thank you, man. Like I say, I can't even put it into words. Uh, it feels totally amazing, man. I've been dreaming about this moment since I was a little kid. You know, growing up, this has always been, you know, the thing that I wanted to do. So, you know, for me to have the opportunity now to just, you know, play football, uh, it's a blessing. So literally, when you were a kid watching the NFL draft, you would sit there and go, you know, someday I'm going to have my name called. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Me and all my cousins, my brother, man, we growing up playing football outside. We used to always say, man, one day we're going to be on the TV playing in the NFL. Uh, you know, all of us had all our different teams, but, man, you know, this is something that has, has been in our minds since I was a little kid. For those out there who probably have those same dreams, I wonder, Teron, when you get drafted, like for the next couple of days, what is it like? Do you just hear from everybody that you've ever known in your life and your phone blows up and you're, there's just, you're just so much stuff going through your head? What have these last few days been like? Oh, uh, it's been kind of hectic, man. Like, you know, you get, uh, I never really realized how much support I've had, man, until these past couple of days, man. You know, you get test messages from everywhere, calls from everywhere, man. So everybody's showing a lot of love, man. You know, thank you to, to everybody for all the support and everything. So, um, you know, it, like I said, it's a blessing, man. You know, you really see who all is behind you. You mentioned your brother, and I want to get into that story. Uh, your brother, Darren, passed away of leukemia uh, when you guys were little. You were nine years old at the time. I mean, you've overcome a lot. So to get to this point, um, do you feel like Darren's right next to you, kind of guiding you the whole way through? Yeah, for sure, man. I always felt like he was right beside me, man. I make sure I make the right decisions, man. So, you know, right after I got drafted, man, I went and hugged my mom, man, and I kind of looked to the sky like, you know, I, I made that promise, you know, and I stuck to it. So, like I said, it's been overwhelming, um, you know, the satisfaction that I've had after I got drafted. What did his death and, and you know, going through that experience, what did that teach you as a young boy about life? And, and how did it change you, do you think? Not not football related necessarily, yeah. just in life. Yeah, uh, it definitely changed me a lot, man. Um, going through that, I feel like, what, how my brother reacted to the stuff is what changed me. Like going throughout the whole process of getting chemo and stuff, man, he always had a smile on his face. You know, he was always trying to uh, help other people. So, you know, just that, man, I tried to embody that, embody that in my life, man. You know, never complaining uh, when I'm working out, just trying to get my best efforts, man. Uh, you know, and just trying to live my life like he did. I know you were really into basketball and I know you stepped away from the game of football until you were in 10th grade, I think. So why did you step away? And why did you come back to the game? Basketball was always kind of my first love. You know, my brother, he loved football uh, and I would always play with him, but basketball was always kind of my first love, man. You know, and getting into to basketball in high school, I, I think I kind of realized uh, you know, basketball wasn't a sport for me also because I went to a smaller school, so I played power four slash center at 6'2". You know, I was like, I don't know if that's going to work out, man. But my sophomore year, uh, I really felt like it was the year for me to, you know, get back into football. So I got back into it, man. Um, you know, it was an amazing year. Went to the state championship, and it really made me fall back in love with the football, man. Playing just, you know, I felt that love that me and my brother had when I was younger. So, you know, from there, I just kept building on it year to year. Um, just working, working every day, man. And, you know, kind of the results is, is where I'm at now. What does the game of football mean to you? I mean, you, you have used the platform to really improve the community. You're really involved in all of that. You've used the platform to better yourself as a football player, to have a voice. So, it, you know, in these years that have gone by since 10th grade, what has the game of football meant to you? And moving forward, what does it mean to you? And this game's given me so much. Um, like I tell a lot of people, man, I don't think that I would have been able to go to college without football, without a scholarship, man. You know, that the opportunity of football opened that door for me. Um, you know, going through our school, man, my first my first year in high school, I kind of struggled in the classroom and most of the stuff was on me, man. So uh, once I got into football, man, you know, my coaches, you know, kind of taught me accountability. And, and that's how, you know, I, I graduated last year, May 2020 with my applied mathematics degree. Football has gave me so much, man. I feel like it's, it's really helped me uh, evolve as a person. Oh, I want to get into that uh, major of yours in just a moment here, but let's talk football first. Uh, okay. at Coastal Carolina last year, an amazing season, dominant, first team All-American, defensive player of the year in the Sun Belt Conference. What did that season prove to you about your game? 
the satisfaction that I got from that season, man, I can't even explain it in the words. Like, a lot of the guys that I came in with, man, we had been building, we're building, you know, we're working, you know, we weren't really seeing the results. And then a lot of people don't know the year before last year, I feel like that's when we first took our great leap, you know, at the season, even though we didn't see the results and wins, but we had so many more close games and battles that we knew that the next year that we really was going to be something to be reckoned with. So going into last year, man, and beating Louisiana, beating App State, the top team in the conference, beating BYU, one of the teams that, you know, was kind of high and everybody was trying to act like we didn't have a shot beating those guys. It meant a lot to me, man. Couldn't ask for a better year to go out as a senior. What areas of your game, Teron, do you feel like you need to improve the most to make it and stay in the NFL? I think the things that I definitely have to uh, work on, you know, that I've been working on now, you know, is kind of flexibility. Those pressures to sacks, uh, that ratio, man, is big. And it's a lot of that is, you know, uh, being able to bend around the corner and not around, you know, working on that. Uh, working on my in the run game, you know, being consistent with my eyes, being consistent with my footwork, make sure I'm doing the right thing with my strike uh, and, and things of that nature. So you want to get better at the bend. I've been working on that for 40 years. Like, how do you do it? What is, how do you improve your bend? How do you improve your flexibility? Do you go into yoga classes? I mean, yes, sir. Um, actually, yeah, I've been doing yoga for a while now, man. I feel like that's really helped me take a step up. Uh, but not just that, when I got the Michael Johnson performance, they really took my mobility and stuff to another level because they taught me a lot of range of motion stuff that I could do. So, you know, doing those stuff, doing the ankle flexion and stuff like that. And from that point, you know, it's more technique based. Just make sure I'm working on my technique. And when I look at guys um, like Joey Bosa, man, they're really technician. They're great with their hands, uh, you know, and things like that. So, you know, just working on what works for you as a person. I love that. Okay, off the field, let's talk about this. Undergraduate degree in applied mathematics and an actual science, uh, actuarial science major minor. I'm sorry, an actuarial science minor. Yeah. I majored in radio. Science. I majored in radio, television, and film. We didn't have any of that stuff. So, uh, <laughs> what exactly is that? And tell me, give me like the name of some of the classes that you took. You know, football didn't work out. That was kind of my, my second my second plan, man, you know, to be an actuary, to get on the, at an insurance uh, firm, you know, and kind of work for probabilities to kind of uh, establish some of those premiums and stuff. Um, but a lot of the classes I took for actuaries, I mean, it was a mix of business classes. So I took like decision analysis, um, you know, and it was a mixture of that, um, you know, some of the economics classes that you take as a business major. I mean, there's some of the actuarial classes, but um, like I said, man, it was rough, man. It was a grind, but I definitely am um, thankful that I was able to, you know, graduate and get that. Uh, looking back on it, it was definitely worth it. Well, time management now is all about football. So you're a Philadelphia yeah. Eagle. We're going to see you in Philadelphia here in the next couple of weeks. W what is next for you? What Are you in the weight room? Are you studying the playbook? Do you have a sense of what they want from you as an NFL player? Give me the, give me the latest. You know, working on my techniques, position work, make sure I'm, I'm getting my footwork right. Uh, like I said, working on that bend, uh, I'm doing yoga, uh, a lot of that range of motion stuff to make sure my body's right, man. You know, and then exercising my mind. One thing that I was told, you know, start back watching films so you can, uh, you know, get back into that knowledge. And, you know, when you, when, when you start asking those questions, your mind's already, you know, kind of keying into that stuff. But right now, that's what I'm doing. Uh, I got to be there May 12th, and I'm excited, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm ready to get up there now.